The pipe families I have preloaded into this job. There they are here. The lateral and the lateral and riser, and we'll use a trap one as well. So I'm going to start off using the um, pipes that are lateral, and we'll start over here. Well, let's have a look at what we're going to put in first. Uh, we have to, should be in floor plan to do this, of course. Pipes that are lateral. I'm not going to place these on a face, I'm going to place it on a work plane, which is going to be the current work plane I'm in, the bedrooms level. Don't worry too much about the actual height for these things, but we can set a few things here. It's generally going to fall 1 to 100, and it's going to be a 1 to 100, or a 100 diameter pipe. So we'll place that charging through our building there. And you can see that appear in 3D, and in cross-section. In cross-section, we can just simply move that up or down wherever we want it. I'll just get it so that it is going underneath the foundations. Now, what's happened in the plan view is that it's disappeared from the plan view because there's one thing we haven't done, and that's to set the view range. So typically, for my piping layouts, I set the depth of the view range to be unlimited. However, it will depend on the projects you're working on. So now it can see as far as it needs to see to see all those pipes. So we'll be able to model everything up. Unfortunately, the view templates don't handle the view range. So we've got one lateral going through there. I need to add another pipe in here that is going to have a riser on it and the lateral. So that will be the riser and lateral. Let's grab that up into here. Um, again, it's just going to be placed on the work plane, but maybe I should think that it's on the garage work plane because it's going to go underneath the garage floor. Actually, I'll just set it to bedrooms and we'll see what happens in there because we can change it later on as well. So again, this is going to be uh, 1 to 100 pipe falling, a 100 diameter pipe falling at 1 to 100. I'll just click on here and that's going to set the alignment at least in the right place. So in plan, it is correct. Now this happens sometimes with the piping families. You get the little no spoken symbol and it's not drawing the pipe. Now there's something in the maths here. I'm going to cancel out of placing that one. If I change this to a DN80, and place that pipe, it works. All I need to do now is select that and change that back to A100. Now, see here the pipe has been placed correctly in plan, but not right in elevation. You can simply drag these up and down. However, I don't like to drag too far um, across levels. Um, you can get some um, display things happening there that you might not want. So the easiest thing to do is simply edit the work plane and pick the plane that you want it to belong to, which is here. And it snaps down into there. Now I can adjust it up and down sort of according to there. I need to adjust that riser height. Zoom up into that. And um, I just need to adjust the length of this. Now I can use um, alignments using align and locking, but that's just picked on it. So that's doing what needs to happen there. Um, in fact, I should align these two together so that if I move one, I really want to move this down a bit. I'll just nudge that down with the arrow keys, get both of them moving correctly. So that's the first step. I've got in the main pipelines and set up my views so that I can see everything there. Now, if I want to see the actual pipes, I can just change to medium level of detail. There are other pipes that are modelled. However, when I'm actually modelling the pipe layouts, it's much easier to work in course mode with the schematic line work. So now we'll go add some fittings on. I'll work on these fittings in the middle here. Um, to hook up the WC into there, we need a riser and lateral. So this should be a 100. 
And I'm going to give that a bit more of a fall. We'll make it um, onto 10 in the lateral there. And I just need to draw this from there to there. So that's correct in plan. Let's just adjust that back up to there. But in cross section, we just need to find out where that is going to, and I'll just drag that up so that the lateral is actually discharging into the pipe. And again, I'll change the riser height to be what it needs to be. Notice that this pipe is hosted on to the correct floor level. The riser height cannot go below the level that it's hosted onto. If I try and drag that down too far, it will uh, break itself, won't be able to happen. But as long as that riser height is higher than the level it's hosted on, you're okay. The same with the depth of the pipe. I can't adjust that to be higher than the level. So that's why you, you really sort of need to um, host these pipes onto the um, appropriate level. So um, most of these fittings, well, in fact, all of these fittings are going to be riser and laterals, just of different sizes. So we get another one here um, for the bath. That is going to be a 65. We'll simply snap onto that circle and snap onto the line here so that it's correct in plan and then see what it's doing in cross-section for me. I need to adjust that up. and change the riser height. Now, um, the riser height here can be aligned and locked. I'll just turn the line weights off there so that we can see what's going on. Start the align command. I can align and lock that to there without affecting the placement down here. Okay, we'll do the same setting for the um, wash hand basin. We're on the work plane, we're on the right work plane. Draw it correctly in plan. Uh, did I check the diameter and fall of that? Um, 65, it should really be a 40 for a wash hand basin. And again, in cross section, just adjust those heights. Now notice that these risers and laterals here, they're not actually connecting them to the, that main pipe. They're just touching it, pretty much. Okay, so that's place, placing most of the pipe work. I could carry on doing all the rest of the fittings, but it's really it's exactly the same for what I've just shown in the middle there. We'll do some more, though. Um, we need to put an inspection opening at the end here. Now, in version 2 of the um, piping store, there is a riser inspection opening family, so I'll load that into the family, I'll edit the family, load it into the project, and now I can just place that, really I can just place that on that pipe. And again, I'm placing it in plan. Maybe I want to get it onto the end of the pipe. It sort of makes more sense. I'll just close down some of these families. So again, in cross section, there it is there. I just need to adjust those heights. It needs to come up round about where ground level will be, down onto there. Now, that is an um, inspection opening family, so it can be tagged as such. Um, I think I have the tag loaded in, so we'll just go to annotate, tag by category. There it is there. In fact, this pipe can be tagged as well. We need to sort out this end of the pipe work, how it's going to connect into the um, main at the street. Uh, we do need an overflow relief gully, so there is a um, gully trap family now in the store. So again, we'll load that into the, fam into the project. And 
and place this where it needs to be. We'll put it against the wall here. Now, once again, I would have placed that and planned correctly. Um, in fact, it's outside our cross section there, so I better go to my um, south elevation, that will show it. Again, it's placed up on the wrong level. It's still placed on the bedrooms level, so I'm going to pick a new host and live down on this level here. And this gully trap, I'm free to um, adjust where it sits in height relative to that level. Um, it can have an extension in that gully trap. Now, the gully trap does have a built-in um, P-trap into it with the disc, so we can uh, do some more piping to hook that into our lateral pipe. So what we need is a pipe that is running along here. So again, that is going to be a, um, a lateral pipe. But we want it to connect into the pipe at this end. So this time I'm going to um, place it on a face and use the connector disc. Now, so I'm hovering over this connector disc and I can see I've got it because the ring of it is highlighted in blue. If I move away, it's just red. As soon as I move over, it's detected that face of that disc. And now I can snap on to the end point of the schematic line. And then draw this pipe in the direction it's going. It's falling down this way. Again, we've got this problem where the pipe can't be made. So these are, it's an intermittent thing. I'll just do another one here. I'm going to make this pipe just a different size. It certainly needs to be 100. And it'll be falling at 1 to 100 on that face, on that end point. And now it can make it. Once the pipe has been made, it's very hard to break. Uh, this pipe also has an upper extension length. So what it is, is it's hosted on the end of this pipe, so that if this pipe changes fall, this other lateral will move up and down with it, because it's hosted onto its end plane. And I can have it extending up, it needs to come somewhere up here, I'm not too too sure how far yet because I haven't drawn in the other pipe. We need another lateral pipe. In fact, I should just go select this one, go create similar, so the settings are the same. Again, place on the face, this connector ring, snap onto that end point, we'll come straight across here until we hit this pipe. And I just need to adjust this down to there. Now, if I go back to the south elevation, The only thing that needs sorting out is oh, this lateral. Now, oh, this lateral doesn't need that upper extension, so we'll go and set that to zero. But I do need to determine what the fall is, and the only way we can do that is just by guessing it. Let's say it's 1 to 10. How far does that take us? Uh, it needs to be a bit more. 5. 5.5. 6. Just go 6.5. So it's a bit of guesswork there. Um, I could work back the other way, going uphill from the end of this lateral up onto there, but um, either way, we've got there. So let's have a look. So this will my pipe wiggle model. 